Roof layouts can be done a number of different ways in Vertex BD. First of all, it's helpful to know if the roof will be rafter framed or truss framed. If rafter framed, we'll need to add a framing area for the ceiling joists. If truss framed, we just need to add the roof and the bottom cords of the trusses will act as the ceiling joists. In this example, I'll start with rafter framing. So we're going to add a ceiling joist area on top of the second level. So I'm going to switch to the second level ceiling layout. We'll go to add ceiling. Select the material. And here I'm going to pick a ceiling type that has framing. These ceiling systems also include the drywall layer on the underside of the framing. But what we can do is remove that layer since we already added the drywall ceilings in our previous video. So I'm going to select a 2x8 framing. We can select the sheathing layer, right click, and hit delete. Now I click OK. We're going to use the add using walls method. And I'm going to use the exterior line of the wall as our locating line. So I'm going to select one of the second level walls and then I can click linked walls and confirm. And I'll hit escape and now we're ready to add the roof. I'm going to activate the roof layout and then we can choose from a number of different functions available for adding roofs. We have functions for adding standard roof shapes as well as a roof generator. The roof generator is very useful for more complicated layouts and I'm going to use this even though we have a simple case here just to demonstrate how it works. I'm going to click on the RFTR button and this allows us to define the roof using rafter parameters. We can choose which roof system we want to use and I'm going to stay with the 2x10 asphalt shingle roof. The rafter size is automatically populated based on the selection of the roof system. We can set the slope, the fascia height, I'll change that to 6 inches, and whether that fascia is going to be cut vertical or perpendicular to the slope of the roof. We can enter the value of the plate height if you know it, Otherwise, we can hit the Get button and select to choose a wall from the 3D model. And I'm going to click on one of these second level walls and that will automatically fill in the value for the plate height of that wall. I'm going to set the overhang and I'll change the seat cut to be zero and then we can calculate the eave height. Then I'll click OK. I'm going to select one of these second level walls. So I'll get a black line across the top of the wall and then the line is leading me in one direction so I need to continue in that same direction around the perimeter of the building. And when you're done hit confirm and then escape. At this point we just have what's called a sketch roof. It doesn't have our thickness yet. We can select the roof, right click on one of the hip ends, and select change gable type gable. So that'll change the shape of that end of the roof and I'm going to do the same on the other end. I'm also going to right click and select convert surfaces to roofs. So that converts the roof from the sketch roof to a solid. At this point we can add our gable walls. So I'm going to switch to the third level wall layout. Go to the 2D and we'll go to add wall. Select the 2x6 exterior bearing. Click OK. We're on the exterior wall line and I'm just going to start at the top right, lock in vertical, and go all the way down to the bottom right, 
and confirm. And I'll do the same on the other side, except they'll go from bottom to top, just keeping that exterior surface facing in the right direction. If you ever need to flip the wall, you always have the mirror wall button available in the secondary toolbar. So now I can escape, switch to the 3D model, and what I'm going to do is clip this wall with the roof. So first I select the wall, right click, and we're going to select clip with roof. Here I can choose to clip the top of the wall to the bottom side of the roof, and I'm going to leave it flush to that bottom surface. So I leave the offset of zero. If you want it to have a little gap, you can set the value there and control whether that distance is measured perpendicular or vertical. And click OK. We'll do the same at the other end. Select the wall, right click, clip with the roof, click OK, and escape. Now to add the roof on the back of the house, we're going to use the basic roof shape functions. So I'm going to switch to the 2D layout, and now we can select one of the basic roof shapes from the roof menu. I'm going to select Gable, and then we'll notice we get a preview picture here indicating the order of the points we need to select in order to define the roof shape that we want. So point 1 and point 2 indicate the gable end, and point 2 and point 3 control the eave side. So I'm going to select the three points around my bump out in the back of the house so that the ridge runs vertically. My point one will be in the top right, point two will be in the top left, and point three will be back up against the back of the house. So I'll zoom in. I'm going to queue on top of this exterior framing corner. Move my cursor away and I can go 12 inches in the positive x direction and 12 inches in the positive y direction. Then I'm going to lock in horizontal, queue over the opposite framing corner, and then extend another 12 inches, lock in vertical, and this time I can just snap right to the sheathing line. As soon as I make that third point, I get the roof parameters, make sure we're on the appropriate framing selection. So I'm going with the rafters. We can select the roof system. I'll stay with the 2 by 10 shingle. 612 pitch, 6 inch fascia height, vertical. The plate height, we want to make sure you get that from the 3D model and select one of those first level walls so that we have the appropriate value. Our overhang is 12 inches. I'll set this to a three and a half inch seat cut this time and calculate the eave height. Click OK and hit escape. Let's see what that looks like in 3D. And I can choose to either add a gable wall up on top or we can just stretch this bottom wall up so that it gets balloon framed into the roof. To do that we select the wall right click and select stretch to roof. I'm going to hold the control key down so I can select both of those roof slopes and confirm. We get the same dialog that we saw earlier when we clipped the other walls to the roof. So again I'm going to select the top of the wall to the bottom of the roof with a zero offset. Click OK and that wall will now be ballooned up to the roof. The siding on the second level wall is still running through the roof, but we can modify the shape of that siding layer so that it goes up and over the roof. To do that, we'll select the wall, then click anywhere on the siding layer. You'll notice the siding layer now turns purple, and now we can just modify the shape of that individual layer. I'm going to right click on this grab point and select insert point. So now I have a new edge point on the bottom of the siding layer. 
I'm going to locate this point right at the intersection of the siding and the roof. So I'm going to lock in horizontal and snap to the bottom of that roof there. So now if I select that siding layer again, I get my new point here. And I'm going to grab this edge. Let's move it up to the ridge point. Select the siding layer again. And now I can move this point over to the ridge. And I'll move this point down. So I'll lock it in the Z direction by hitting O on the keyboard. And I'm going to snap it to the edge line of the roof by hitting Z over that edge line. And I still have one more point I can add. I'll select this layer again. And I think I just want to add one more point right on this corner here. So I'm going to right click on this point, insert, and snap it right up there onto the top of that roof line. And hit escape. One last thing we can do, when we're adding floors, roofs, and ceilings that have multiple layers, they come in in a packed state so that they appear to be only one layer. We can select all of those structures and then just expand those layers. By selecting one roof, that acts as a selection filter. So now if I hit Control A, that'll select all the objects that are roofs. Now I can right click and select Expand Layers.